Hello viewers, this is Too Fast here. Now if you watched my previous video, I showed you the proper ways to strip wires and also how to crimp butt connectors to splice wires. In this video, I'll show you how to do those same connection, but I'll solder those connections using a soldering iron. I'll also show you how to install heat shrink on a wire. So let's get started. Before I show you how to solder wires and all that fun stuff, let me take a minute to talk about something very important if you're going to be doing any type of soldering inside the vehicle or around the vehicle. Wherever you're doing the soldering work, make sure you put down something like a piece of cardboard so if the melted solder drips, it will not melt and damage the vehicle. This is very important so you don't have an expensive repair bill. Now what I like to use is a silicone mat you see right here. This is actually a solder mat that technicians use to do electronic repairs on a bench. It's heat resistant, chemical resistant, and very flexible. So you can place this over any surface. Now if you want to get something like this, I'll include the link below. Now to solder any electrical components or wires, of course you need a soldering iron like this one right here. Now this one needs to be plugged into an AC outlet for you to use it. You can also get portable soldering iron, like this butane one here. So you fill this up with butane, then you can ignite this and heat up the tip, then solder the electrical components. Another option is a cordless rechargeable soldering iron. This one here is made by the company Iroda and is a Pro 25L. This has a rechargeable lithium ion battery inside. Once you charge this, you can take it anywhere you want. You can use it inside the house or out in the field. In an upcoming video, I will do an unboxing and review of several Iroda soldering iron. So stay tuned for that video. The next thing I need to talk about is the solder you buy. Make sure it's a rosin core solder. What that means is inside the solder, there's actually a rosin flux inside. And when you melt the solder, the flux will actually flow out onto the electrical component and clean the surface. This will help remove any contaminants on the surface and allow the solder to flow onto the metal surface. So even though this solder is very thin, if you cut this across, it's actually hollow inside and there's flux inside in the middle. So let's solder these two wires together. Now after you solder it, you can cover the connection using electrical tape. Or if you want a better looking finish, you can put heat shrink tubing over it. Heat shrink tubing comes in different color and also diameter. So here I'll pick a black heat shrink tube. You can cut this down to the length you need and place a heat shrink tube over the wire. Next I'll strip the insulation off the wire. Now there are a couple of ways you can twist these wires together. One is simply put them together, twist it, solder this, bend this over, put the heat shrink over it. However, if you do it this way, there is a bulge at the top here. So if you don't want this bulge, another method is to twist it along the length of the wire. So look like this. When you solder, make sure you have a wet sponge like I have here and clean the tip. And then tin the surface with solder. Now place the tip of a soldering iron onto the metal surface and start feeding solder. And just let the solder flow into the wire. Look at your solder connection. Make sure there's good solder flow throughout. Now if you find it difficult to keep the wire in a certain position while you're soldering, you can use a tool like this, which has two clamps. To use this, clamp the wire on one side and clamp the other wire onto the other clamp. Now this wire will stay in its place and you can solder it. Now you have to insulate this connection. You don't want to leave it exposed and cause a short circuit. You can either wrap some electrical tape over it or install a heat shrink tube that I placed on the wire earlier. A fast way of heating the heat shrink tube is with a lighter. Just rotate the heat shrink tube. And that's it. Now if you don't want to use a lighter for the heat shrink tube, you can use a heat gun like this one I have here. It does take a little bit longer to heat up the heat gun, but you don't have to deal with an open flame. Now some heat gun comes with different attachments. So this one here, if I put on the tip here, it will circulate the hot air around and it's perfect for heat shrink tubing. Here it is. 
You can also use a mini torch like this one here, but be very careful because it's very hot and it can burn through the heat shrink and the wire. So let's say this is a wire in the vehicle and I want to splice onto this wire, but I don't want to cut it. I'll show you how to tap onto this wire without cutting it. I'll use this wire stripper and strip back part of the insulation. Now with this opening, you can try to wrap the wire around it, but often if this is a thick wire, the insulation will push back to where it was covering the wire. So what I like to do is make a second cut about 1 8 inch from the first cut. Now with the two cuts made, use a knife and cut open the insulation right here. Remove this section. Now with the wire that I'm using to connect to this wire, there are two ways you can wrap this wire. One way is simply wrap it tightly around the wire. And now you can solder this. Now if you do this method, make sure you wrap the wire very tightly. So when you solder the wire, the solder itself will flow through both wires. A second method is to use a pick and split the wire in half. So you have an opening like this. With this other wire, twist the strands and then feed the wire into this hole. Now wrap the wire around. And now you can solder this connection. Place a solder tip on the wire and then start feeding solder. Here's a look at the solder connection. Now you'll have to cover this connection and not leave it open like this. Since the white wire is already in the vehicle, you won't be able to put a heat shrink tube on it. So in this situation, you can use electrical tape and wrap around this connection. Now if you want to make sure this electrical tape doesn't unravel and also prevent this blue wire from pulling away from the white wire, you can install a zip tie right here. Now a better option is to cover the electrical tape with friction tape. These are fabric tape that many manufacturers use on their wiring harness. This one here on the left is made by Tessa and this one on the right is made by 3M. It's very easy to apply. You can rip this. I'll cut off the zip tie. Now you can wrap the tape over the electrical tape. The good thing about this tape is it provides abrasion protection and the adhesive doesn't break down so it's very easy to remove if you have to. Now I'll show you a connection where I'll incorporate crimping, soldering and heat shrink tubing. In this example, let's say if I have to connect a ring terminal to a ground wire, I'll show you how to make a nice connector that has a solid connection and also looks good. For this I have the wire, ring terminal and a heat shrink tube. Now this ring terminal is an insulated connector, meaning there's a plastic sleeve right here. What I'll do is remove this plastic sleeve. Now strip this wire. Place a heat shrink on the wire. I'll use this ratcheting crimping tool to crimp the connector onto the wire. Now solder the end of the wire onto this connector. Put the heat shrink tube on. Here's a finished connector. It has a nice solid connection and also the heat shrink will also give some strain relief for the wire. Well I hope you found this video to be helpful. Whether you're installing a car stereo or adding lights to your vehicle, you want to make sure the connection you make is solid and safe. Now if you're interested in getting these tools, check out the link below. Also if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.